shall we praise the Lord. If that testimony tonight is that love lifted him, the sight of all your feet and begin to worship him. And be lifted you out of the dark place. Hallelujah! 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 
Pastor Blair Outreach Restoration Church and the saints could they just stand and worship the Lord Jesus? Amen. One more time! Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Am I leaving any? Am I leaving out anyone? Praise God. Aaliyah and Tayon Moore. Praise God that you're here. Praise God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. God bless you. There is a blessing awaiting you. You don't have to step in line. It's here for you. Just receive it. In Jesus' name. God bless you. In Jesus' name. Back to back to the I want to revive her in my
God. Praise God. We see Snyder Avenue just coming in from Brooklyn. Praise the Lord, Bishop Bloomfield. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Pastor Gale. Praise the Lord. Come on, stand up and give the Lord a praise. Give the Lord another praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. We have Refuge Temple. Praise the Lord. From the Bronx, praise the Lord Jesus. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Bless Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise, him. praise the Lord Jesus. At this time, praise God. We're going to collect our offering. Praise the Lord Jesus. Real fast. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And I'm going to ask none other than Brother Chris. Praise the Lord. Open door. Come on down. Praise, praise the, the Lord, Lord Jesus. Amen. Mr. Chris, come on down. Praise, praise the Lord the Jesus. Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Amen. Praise Jesus. Praise the Lord. I command you, Satan, in the name of the Lord. Drop your weapon and flee. For the Lord has given me authority. Come on, somebody, just stand to your feet and just magnify the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Come on, give him the highest praise because he's worthy to be praised. Come on, if you believe your God is worthy tonight, just lift up those hands and open up your mouth and just give him the glory. Switch it up for me. It's okay. It's the same basket. 
So, on my right, which is your left, this will be the general offering. And this will be the speaker's offering. Amen? Please follow the direction of the Hosha. Amen. Everyone just stand here for you. Hallelujah. I'd like to bless that before we call it. So maybe God will touch your heart and you give a little more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch them, Jesus. Touch them. Hallelujah. Touch them, God. Touch them. Lord, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for your mercy. Lord, we thank you for your blood. God, we came into your house for a reason, almighty God. And the reason is to lift up all the hands and to magnify you. God, as we are about to collect God, this offering, God. Lord, we just want to thank you, God, for that which you have blessed us in, God. So we could walk into your house and give back a portion, God, into your house. Lord, we pray, God, that you bless it, God. We pray, God, that you multiply it. And God, we pray, Jesus Christ, whatever situation we give out of God, I pray, God, that you give us an extra blessing. As we look to you, we give you honor, and we give you glory, and we say in Jesus' name, amen. amen. Clap your hands, oh, you people, let your voices ring. So, we have, if you're using Zelle or Cash App, it's right there. It's dollar sign, the Apostolic Arc, BPT. And if you're using Zelle, it's the Apostolic Arc, BPT at Yahoo.com. If you don't get it, one of the ushers will give you. So, follow the direction of the usher. Amen? Clap your hands. I'm in the 
travel from too far and not greet us. Praise the Lord. I know it's a revival. Praise the Lord. But we're going to get a revival greeting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So I'm going to ask Pastor Drummond Brown at this time. Praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Come on, let's magnify the Lord. Praise Him. Come on, let's magnify Hallelujah. the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. We're in a revival tonight. Want to greet God and honor God who is my life. Praise God. Want to greet the shepherd of this house. Praise God, Pastor Johnson. Praise God. I'm so elated about Dr. Johnson over there. Yeah. Amen. God, God, thanks. Amen. For what God is doing. Want to greet our preacher. Greet my husband and all that came along with me. I'm here to join in the revival. Because after all of this, after all of this, where? Where? Where will we be? God bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Brother Carlos, praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord, praise God. Praise Let everything that has birth give him glory. Hallelujah. Somebody shout a hallelujah, praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, honor the Lord on tonight. Praise God, I greet Bishop Johnson. Praise God to Pastor Blair. Praise God to all the ministers. I greet in the mighty name of Jesus. I bring you greetings from my pastor, Pastor Romeo Hall. Praise God. Looking at your team, it says, after all this, where will you be when he shall come with trumpet sound? Yes. Oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness alone. Fail to stand before his throne. On Shall we praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord again. Hallelujah. I didn't say praise me. I didn't say praise the bishop. I said praise the Lord. Hallelujah. For the Lord is great. Hallelujah. He's good. Hallelujah. All men to find the Lord with me. Let us take talk these things together. Hallelujah. We thank God just for being here yet again. Hallelujah. We thank God for the invite. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. We thank God for this revival. And I'm thanking God for all the young people that are here on the lower balcony, on the upper balcony as well. Hallelujah. I thank God for each and every one of you. We thank God just for the theme. It's a timely theme. And I'm expecting God to do something great amongst his people, even me. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. I'm not just coming, just expecting something from myself. For him to do something in my life, but all of your lives as well. Whatever it is that you're going through, whether it's depression, whatever, whatever it is, God will make a way for you. There's a revival in this room if you just believe. 
Not to each and every one of you. If you just believe, pray for me as I pray for you. And again, my name is Minister Willis. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Come on, put your hands together. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Minister McKenzie, praise the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. Shall we praise the Lord, everyone? Shall we praise the Lord, everyone? Praise the Lord. So I just find it an honor to be in the house of the Lord. I love that thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Praise God. I just want to bring you greetings from the True Witness Church of Jesus Christ in Patterson, New Jersey. Bishop Michael McDonald and Pastor Dean Robinson, they sent their greetings. They gave us permission to come out today. And even though there was a lot of traffic, we thank God that we were able to make it out here safely just Amen. to worship with you because we want to be with the Lord at the end of it all. God bless you. Amen. Jesus name. When I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say that I am blessed. I got a testimony. When I look back over my life, and I think things over, I can truly say that I've been blessed. I got a testimony. When I look back over my life, and I think things over, Evangelists, ushers, 
visiting for incarnation. I agree to the most exalted name of Jesus. Knowing that Jesus saved us one day. And Jesus is here waiting on us to keep in his appearance. And as I drop it clear, after all this, where we will be. I want to share something with you. The enemy of a way to touch your mind. So you can see things upside down. But when you have the Holy Ghost, he turns things around. The enemy of a way to let you see the wrong things. But when you have the Holy Ghost, you see the right things. The enemy of a way to let you use your hands and do the wrong things. But when you have the Holy Ghost, you want to find whatever you can find to do things that is of God. The enemy of a way to make you walk the wrong walk. But as the scripture declare, where do I walk? To the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy word and thy staff may comfort me. Tonight is such a blessing to be in Apostolic Hawk one more time. You know, they said the traffic wasn't too bad, and we made it on time. Even though one sister was a little delay, but thanks be to God. I enjoy coming to Bridgeport. I enjoy worshiping God, because I know what God has done for me. I know where the Lord has brought me from. And tonight I'm saying, stand on a solid rock, and let the devil know that he must fail. God bless you, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah, let us stand, praise the Lord Jesus, let us stand, praise God. Hallelujah, come on, give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, bless the Lord, praise God. We're going to get our speaker on at this time, praise the Lord. Bishop Johnson at this time, praise the Lord. Put on our speaker, praise the Lord. Let the church magnify the Lord. Praise his name. Let the church magnify the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And somebody help me to give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. If you are not here for a miracle, a blessing, or to be revived, I would invite you to take the exit. Fasten your seatbelts. There's going to be a bumpy ride. Stand up, preacher. I want you to sit down in the apostle's chair. That's my dad. That's the one that I was groomed under. He sat in that chair when he was able to travel. And the next time he decided to travel, he was sitting there again. And I want to tell the people, that God is still working miracles. Amen. Those who can see this handkerchief, it's a handkerchief that the apostle anoint. And over the years, many people have been delivered by the faith of my dad. Through God. And just a few weeks ago, I got the testimony and I got to share it. Dr. Johnson, that's my wife, she blessed a baby in this same church. And the baby had a kidney problem and could not urinate. And after she prayed for that infant, she put one of these handkerchiefs inside of the clothing of the little baby. The testimony that we got is that the child starts to ruminate. And from that time until now, Bless the Lord. still shut up and feel God upon this house.
But at this time, I'm going to give time to the man of God. Stretch your hand towards him. And I'll tell you tonight, so you'll preach like you never preached before. There's a level of anointing that's on you right now. Kebo Shanta Rabaha. Rabba Shanta Rabakuta Sayyabaha. Kebo Shanta. Your anointing is going to be different. And I'm going to present to you the speaker of the hour. A man who fears God. A man who loves God. And a man who would say, Just say it, God. Pastor, take the point. And tell your neighbor, if your neighbor is going to disrupt you, Christ and we do thank and praise him for this day for this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it and truly it is good for us to be here amen in this place at this time to worship and to magnify our great God and Savior the Lord Jesus Christ um, Bible call has already been established and all of the names of the ministries and their leaders have been called and so I'm going to honor, amen, praise the Lord, that establishing of protocol. And um, But I want to give all honor and all praise to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, amen. And I want to give double honor to the angel of this house, amen, the person of Bishop Johnson. Can we put our hands together? Thank God for him. We can do better than that. Clap your hands for the man of God and for his lovely wife, Dr. Johnson, and to, amen. Uh, all of the evangelists and ministers and deacons and mothers and everybody that served in the praise of the Lord alongside him here in this part of the vineyard. Understanding and realizing though we have all of these different names in different locations, there's only one church. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Some of y'all didn't say amen to that kind of spirit, amen. but there's only one church. Hallelujah. And so whether you're in Brooklyn, whether you're in the Bronx, or whether you're here, amen, in Connecticut or New Jersey, we're all a part of the same church. Amen. And it's still one Lord. Yes. There's still one faith. 
there's still one baptism. And as long as the world stands, there will only be one God that is above you all, through you all, and in you all. Amen. And we thank God that we know him by name tonight, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. And beside him, there is no other. Amen. So we honor, amen, all of those, amen, praise the Lord, from all of the various ministries in Jesus' name again. Amen. We thank God for each and every one of you, amen, being here. Amen. I have an assignment tonight, and I want to, amen, by the help of the Lord, fulfill, amen, what it is that the Lord has given unto me to deliver unto, amen, his people this night. Amen. And um, I'm going to call your attention to quite a few scriptures, and, and but we'll pick it up first with the theme scripture. Amen. And we'll get it out of the book of St. Mark, the 8th chapter. Amen. And we'll pick up at verse number 36. Amen. And we'll read a few verses out of that. And then, um, by the help of the Lord, we're going to run over to St. John 9 and 4. Amen. Matthew 25, 6 through 13. Romans 13, verse number 11. And then we'll conclude our reading in 1 Thessalonians 5. Second chapter, uh, the second uh, verse through, amen, the tenth verse, amen, in the name of the Lord. The book of Mark, the eighth, amen, praise the Lord, chapter, amen, and um, we're going to pick up verse number 36, amen, and as it is our custom, when you have it, shout amen, amen, amen. Mark 8, amen, and verse number 36, and the word of the Lord reads on this wise, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And I want to read verse number 38 because I believe it is very important to tonight's message. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed. When he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. And let's run over to the book of St. John. Praise the Lord. Chapter 9. And um, I promise you that we won't, we won't be too long tonight. Amen. But we're going to give you what thus saith the Lord. St. John chapter number 9 verse number 4. And these are the words of our Lord Jesus. He said, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. The book of Matthew, the 25th chapter. Amen. In the name of the Lord. And we'll read verses 6 through 13. Praise the Lord. Amen. You got it. Shout amen. amen. Matthew 25, verse 6. What of the Lord reads on this wise. And at midnight there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all of the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answer, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. The book of Romans, the 13th chapter. Hallelujah. Romans 13, and we're going to pick up verse number 11. Amen. In the name of the Lord. Romans chapter number 13, verse number. 11. Now God had shouted amen. amen. And that knowing the time that now it is high time 
to awake out of sleep. But now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. First Thessalonians chapter number five. Amen. Praise the Lord. And this is where we will conclude our reading. First Thessalonians chapter number five. And we'll pick it up at verse number two. And we'll read down. Praise the Lord to verse number ten. Amen. You have it. Shout amen. amen. Well, the Lord reads of this wise for yourselves. Know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. That that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light. And the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night. And they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we be awake or whether we be asleep, we should live together with him. Every heart praying. Most gracious and eternal God. Father, we come before you this night thanking you, O oh Lord God, for your word, for your word is right all by itself. Thanking you, O oh God, that you left on record these words to perfect and to prepare the saints. Father, we thank you tonight for your anointing that we felt from the very time we walked through these doors until this very present time. And Father, we ask you, let your anointing permeate through the atmosphere even now. Let the Holy Ghost of God move from heart to heart and from breast to breast. Father, we ask you, O oh Lord, that you will speak unto us as only you can. For we are your people. We are the sheep of your pasture. And we ask you, O oh Lord God, do tonight whatever is in your will to do to us. In order, O oh God, that we might be the ones you're calling for in these last and evil days. Do these things for us and we'll be ever so careful to give your name all of the glory and all of the honor and all of the praise. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ we do pray. And we that love the Lord with one voice, we shout amen to the glory of God in the name of the Lord. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor real quick. Neighbor, neighbor. It's, almost it's almost midnight. midnight. Find you another neighbor and tell your neighbor it's almost, it's almost midnight. midnight. Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here tonight to be revived. It is my belief that in this hour of the church, God is doing something in the hearts of those that love him. Amen. It is my belief that God is working in the hearts and the minds of those that desire to be in his will. Because I've been hearing recurring things throughout many of our gatherings that are pointing us to the coming of the Lord. Yes. And brothers and sisters, I don't know about you, hallelujah, tonight, whether you still believe or not, but the reality is, is that the Lord is soon to come. Amen. Anybody believe tonight that the Lord is soon to come? Amen. We are living in an hour in the church world where we've become so distracted 
by the temporary things of this life to the point where even believers no longer believe that the Lord is coming. We are in an hour where, hallelujah, our imaginations are no longer in operation because of television and movies and Hollywood. Y'all are going to help me preach tonight, but I'm going to preach anyhow. Everything that we can think about, you can find on YouTube. You can find on Instagram. You Anything you could imagine, hallelujah, praise the Lord, you can find it on the internet. The internet, which is www. And I wonder if any of my young people know what www stands for. I said, my young people, y'all hard-headed. <laughs> hallelujah. But some of our children and youth, hallelujah, don't know what WW stands for. They just go and put it in the browser. Hallelujah. But it is called the World Wide Web. And brothers and sisters, if you pay attention, there is many of our young people and many of our adults caught in its trap. Because the purpose of a spider's web, hallelujah, is to catch its prey in order that it might come and consume it after a while. Hallelujah. And the enemy has set a trap for us. Hallelujah. And that internet has taken away our imagination. Amen. Anything we can think of is at our disposal. Anything that we want to know, we can Google it. Hallelujah. And it got to the place, hallelujah, where you no longer have to type it. You can say, hey, Google. Amen. Hey, Siri. Hallelujah. You can speak it, hallelujah. And it can look it up for you and speak back to you and tell you the answer to your question. Hallelujah. We don't even have to work hard, hallelujah, to research anything because it will Trapped in a web. And it got us so comfortable to the point where we got at ease in Zion. And we've enjoyed living down here because of all of the luxuries and, and all of the things that we've accumulated. And everything that we thought, hallelujah, has its place. But can I remind you, brothers and sisters, that it's only temporary. Can you do me a favor? Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's only temporary. Hallelujah. The house that you live in is only temporary. The car that you're driving is only temporary. The job that you're holding is only temporary. The body that you possess. Hallelujah. It's only temporary. Hallelujah. But the enemy has fed us a false reality and we think that we're meant to stay here forever. But brothers and sisters, I came to revive your consciousness today to let you know that we're strangers and foreigners down here. We're pilgrims that are only simply passing through. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor that this is not your final destination. Hallelujah. Somebody tonight thinks that this is the last stop on the train. Tonight somebody thinks, that, hallelujah, this is as far as it goes. Hallelujah. Sometimes, Bishop, I wish that the reality of what some believe was the truth, but the reality of the matter is that but there's a real reality that we're all really about to experience after a while. There is something beyond this. The real work in a stage play and in a movie is not what you see on the screen. 
Neither is it what you see on the stage. But it is the manifestation of what's going on behind the scenes. Amen, amen. And brothers and sisters, if we, hallelujah, are spiritually in tune with what's going on in this hour, there is something going on behind the scenes. Amen. Come on, somebody say behind the scenes. Yeah, there is something happening behind the scenes. There's something transpiring. The Bible will call it a war. There, there is a war that is happening behind the scenes. Hallelujah. There is a conflict. Hallelujah. Behind the scenes. Sister Ravonica, tonight there are two opposing parties fighting behind the scenes. Hallelujah. There are angels and, and devils fighting behind the scenes. There's a war. There, there's a tug of war going on behind the scenes. And I wish somebody tonight would ask. What are they fighting for? What are they wrestling over? They're wrestling over the same thing that they were fighting over when Moses died. The Bible said they started fighting over where the body of Moses was. And brothers and sisters, can I tell you tonight, there's a war behind the scenes. And the devil and God are touching over the souls of every individual in the room.
Nobody but Jesus could do it. And so, since of God, can I park the car here? Shouldn't no devotional leader ever have to come into the house of God and say, Anybody gonna praise the Lord? Amen. Anybody got a testimony? Bishop, hallelujah. He asks, Anybody got a testimony? And 50 people in the room, and only two people get up. If you don't really got a strong, long testimony, at least you can jump up and say, Thank God I've been redeemed. I'm gonna get up to wait a little while. At least you can jump up and say, Thank God for Jesus. You ain't got nothing to thank him for. Y'all waiting for the check in the bed. You waiting for the promotion on the job. You waiting for the materialistic things that deem you successful. You are waiting for I just got approved for the loan for the new house, forgetting that that house will soon.
Thank you for your stand. We're ready to get you out of here. But I got to get to the end of the road. Because we thank God for his sacrifice on Calvary. We thank God that Jesus went to the grave. And Bishop, sometimes I fear that we've turned the miracle of Jesus into a monument. Uh -huh. And this is why I say it. It's because we'll get so fixated upon the certain areas of his work that we forget that there's something else. Yes. I've been down in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank God. I'm glad to. I got the Holy Ghost and we start quicking and bucking. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad for it too. But after Jesus got out of the grave and he ascended into heaven and he sat at the right hand of the majesty on high, he sent back the Holy Ghost. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. We thank God for the Holy Ghost. Amen. But see, the Holy Ghost for some of us is just a trophy. Come on up. Preach. Hallelujah. I'm going to do a Something to show off. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, we come in the house of God and, and we show out in the church to let everybody know I got the Holy Ghost. So we use it as a trophy. We come in and show them. That's why churches can't fellowship like they used to. I'm going to get into some good trouble. Hallelujah. For now, we're just trying to out-preach one another. Praise and worship. We're just trying to out-sing one another. That's right. Hallelujah. In order that you can shine your trophy on display. Preach. So, now the church has become competition. Now we're trying to find out how we can outdo somebody else. And how our services can be bigger than somebody else. Yes. Yes. 
to the church. Yeah. For the body that Christ died for. Yeah. It's in his objective. Because he knows how powerful yeah. the ecclesia is. Yeah. He knows the power that we possess. That's the reason why he's mad at us. Because when he got kicked out of heaven, the Bible said, Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. For Satan has come down in great wrath. And now he's, he's, he's on a war path after the souls of God's people. But see, what we've done is, we cause the things that, yes, it is good for us to honor and to thank God for, but we we stop at those things. Yes. Yes. And so we stop that water baptism, uh, stop that the Holy Ghost, we stop that that stuff, thinking that Jesus was done. But see, Jesus went back to heaven, and the Holy Ghost that we receive, it's not a trophy. Neither is it something that we show and tell and show off. But the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters, is simply, y'all ready for this? A down payment. Amen. I'm in the book, read the scriptures. Some of y'all looking at me crazy. Like you ain't never heard that before. It is just simply a, a, a small part of a greater inheritance. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. But can I tell you that the Holy Ghost is only a preview? Y'all say y'all want to be with high. But, but the Holy Ghost is only a glimpse. Come on. Yeah, you right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. 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 I'll put it this way. The Holy Ghost is only a taste. Yeah. 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 You know how you go to the mall uh -huh. and somebody out there wants a bag of chips that's brand new yeah. and they'll put one in a little cup yeah. and say here's a sample yeah. some of them are mad at me but I'm in the book the Holy Ghost is only a taste yeah. go ahead it's only a sample it's only a, a small portion of a greater inheritance it's only a down And, and what was the down payment for? On, the down payment that the Holy Ghost came Jesus. for was so that it could put down a deposit on something that he's coming back later yes, to collect. Yes, I'm getting ready to get out of here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's only a, a token. Hallelujah. It's only a deposit.
Has anybody been noticing that 2024 feels like 2020? Maybe it's just me that's been noticing. I remember in 2020 there were so many death notices. So many people were dying back to back. Dying from COVID. And so many people, every time you turn around, somebody else was dying. Somebody else was dying. And it became this, to a place where it was overwhelming. So we got a break from it for a couple of years. But all of a sudden, 2024 has crept on in here. True. It's starting to look a lot like 2020. That's right. Every time you turn around, somebody else is dying. Amen. Yep. True. So it started having me to sit down, Bishop, and start to really sober up and look and say, Lord, what is going on behind the scenes? What is happening in the earth? Well, Lord, what is transpiring? Lord, what is going on? And if you start asking the Lord what is going on, the Lord will start revealing to you what is happening. It's, it's not a coincidence, brothers and sisters, because everything that happens in the earth, hallelujah, though the world doesn't understand it, it's a sign for the believer. Yes, amen, amen. Donald Trump giving a speech, and somebody trying to assassinate him. The Lord said, I'm going to let it happen. And I'm not going to take his life. But I'm going to give them a sign. So that when they see it happening, that they who are doing this. There's a lot of saints, Bishop, doing this. But looking down, I'm going to let some stuff start happening so that you can start. Amen, amen. God never let something happen in the earth just because. Right. That's the truth. You know what he'll start doing? He'll start letting these things happen so that we as a people can start looking in the mirror right. and start examining ourselves. Amen. Start seeing whether or not we be in the faith. Start trying to figure out, Lord, is my heart right? Am I still holding that 20 year grudge? Amen. Am I still harboring something in my heart to that brother, that sister over there that did something to me last year? Oh. Come on now. So after we start examining ourselves, the next thing we start doing, we start saying, Lord, forgive me. Yes. Of anything that I've said, yes. anything that I've done. Whether I know I did it or whether I don't know that I did it. Lord, I want you to forgive me for anything. The things that I thought about that I shouldn't have thought about. Lord, whatever has entered into my heart. Lord, I need for you to forgive me. But we came tonight to remind Because the Lord said, don't tell me that it's almost midnight. And because it's almost midnight, somebody tonight ought to give their heart a search and say, Lord, search me. Lord, search me. And if there be anything. Oh, I ain't got a church right up in through here. Hallelujah. But somebody in that room ought to say, Search me, Lord. Because it's almost midnight. And so watch. Watch the scriptures that I read tonight. There, are, there were a few things that it dealt with. And one of the things that it dealt with, brothers and sisters, I'm beginning to see ever so clear. If you notice the resounding theme of the scriptures dealt with being asleep. Did y'all notice that the scriptures kept saying, wake up? Started saying, look up, wake up. We not like those that are sleeping in the night. Started talking about stuff like that. And so my mind went back, Brother Jeffrey, to that to, to that situation, and I'm almost done, hallelujah, to that situation where Jesus said, y'all, come with me. I'm going to pray. Right, right, right. Yes. So Jesus went away. Yes. And see, y'all know that ever since the law occurs, it happened, but, but really Jesus was showing us a greater picture. And so what happened was Jesus left his disciples sitting there, and he went away to pray. And while 
out. He was away. Hallelujah. He came back. And what happened, mother? Hallelujah, I feel good in the Holy Ghost. They were sleeping. Jesus went away. But when he came back, they were sleeping. So, he woke them up. He said, wait, y'all can't watch for an hour. Y'all can't wait for an hour. I'm just, I'm just praying for an hour. Y'all can't even stay up. So he left them there again. And he went back to where he was. And Jesus never does anything just because. He always does a revelation behind it. But we have to have an ear to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. So Jesus went away again. And he wanted to see what they was going to do. So he went away to pray. And when he came back, after Jesus rebuked them, you would have thought that they would have stayed away. But when Jesus came back, they would sleep again. Jesus got frustrated, my lady, Dr. Johnson, he got frustrated, he said, sleep on. Keep on sleeping. Why y'all keep on sleeping? He said, but I want y'all to do something. I need y'all to stop all this sleeping, and I want y'all to watch as well as pray. And he said, because I don't want y'all to enter into temptation. Because what happens is, he that he was going to go away. And this time, he wasn't going to be in a little remote space to where he was real, real close to them. But he knew that he was going away to prepare a place for them. But Jesus knew that while he was away, some of us would be sleeping. Amen. Unconscious. My God. To the reality. That the same one that went away is the same one that is coming again. And church, if we be honest with ourselves, we have gotten to a place where we've started nodding at the will. We're nodding at the plow. We're working, but we're dozing off like my little son right here. I know you're tired, you didn't know. I said you just had to get your power now. So you know what we do? We start dozing off. And so what we start doing is we start falling asleep to righteousness. And so we start letting little things creep in. I'm getting out of here. Hallelujah. We start letting little things creep in, and then we start getting justification for it and so I said it ain't that big of a deal it, it don't really mean that much to God so we start dozing off for fornication and we start acting like we can shack up or y'all gonna help me preach tonight we act like we can shack up and live together unmarried but I came to tell you the devil is a liar because if you keep on shacking up with her after a while you're gonna lay up with her because if a man put Now everybody's co-ed. Hallelujah. Now everybody, not in the world, in the church. We got preachers shacking up. Deacon shacking up. Y'all ain't ready for revival. Holiness. Hallelujah. I feel it in the Holy Ghost soul. Hallelujah. You got to come out from among them. And you got to be separated, say it below. If you ain't put a ring on it, you got to be out. Amen. That's right. And it's supposed to not be burned. He's he talking about I'm stronger than that. Ain't no man stronger than that. Because guess what she ain't doing? She ain't walking around in that head covering that long dress on every day. Now you don't talk to me. You're in the comfort of your own home. Next thing you know, you're coming out with little suck dresses on. Coming out with little boxes. Please, y'all don't talk to me. Hallelujah. And then, ah, hallelujah. Go start wondering, hallelujah. And you will start desiring. Something, hallelujah, that's in your face every day. And after a while, you're going to get in. But the Bible tells us that we ought to pray a prayer. And that prayer ought to tell us, lead us not into temptation. But some of us are setting ourselves up to be tempted. Yeah. 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 
strong enough. Ain't none of us strong enough. God will say, put no trust in your flesh. Amen. That's right. I don't care how long you have had the Holy Ghost. Let it keep walking past you long enough. Let it keep dangling in front of you long enough. Let it keep on. And after a while, you're going to indulge it. I'm going to talk to you. Hallelujah. I wish I was in an apostolic church.
So you have to examine itself. And the church has to wake up out of her sleep. Because the master has been gone for so long to the point that the devil has whispered in our ears. Where's the sign of his coming? Because since the father slept, he hasn't come back yet. The devil's whispered in somebody's ear who's been in the church since the 70s, 80s, 60s, and now they're in 2024, and they've been laboring a long time, and the enemy has whispered in their ear, where is the sign of his coming? Because since the world began, everything continues as it's been. And so we start listening to the enemy, and he puts us into a deep sleep, and we start believing, hallelujah, subconsciously, that he's not coming back. And even though we won't audibly say it, we start living like this. That's why we don't show up for Bible study no more. I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to help the pastors out. Hallelujah. You can get a service like this, and they'll show up three nights. But when Wednesday night Bible study come, they know where to be found. Preach. Time to pray. No way to be found. Why? Because he whispered in our ear. He, he came back yet. Go on and enjoy yourself. You've been going to church for so long. Yes. All these years, Sister Shalikwa, it's time for you to do you. And now we're in a generation where everybody wants to do them. Amen. So you're doing you and doing you, we'll see you right to heaven. Yeah. Right to the lake of fire. Yes. Right to God. Everybody got to do them. And so everybody doing them. And so prayer meeting, Bible study, and they know where to be found. Oh. And it's not because. You started out like that right. because it's 1022. Because when you started out, you had a zeal. All right. Couldn't keep you up out of God. Amen. But somewhere along the way, he started whispering. And all of a sudden, you started being rocked to sleep. And so you started falling asleep to the things that were essential to your salvation mm. to help you sustain. Yeah. Can I, can I tell you something? If you don't pray, yes. you have no power. Amen. I don't care how well you sing, Amen. how well you preach, how well you play, if you don't pray. Amen. You know, that's the thing that the enemy fights us the most. Amen. You get down to pray, you automatically that you automatically fall asleep. Yes. 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 True. Yes. So true, sir. This prayer is a direct line to God. You know what prayer is like? Prayer is like a mother's umbilical cord. It's what gives the body its nutrients. And, and, and when you cut off prayer, you cut off the supply and you try to survive on your own. But the thing about this body is that this body can never be disconnected from the source. We must always be connected to the source. That's why the Bible says you are the vine, I am the vine, and you are the branches, and you have to abide in me, and I got to abide in you. You got to stay in me. You can never disconnect yourself and think you're going to survive. It's almost midnight. And this message is to sober the church up and to remind us that though we are here. And we're experiencing all that we are experiencing. One day, all of this as we know it must come to an end. Amen. One or two ways. Either the breath is going to leave this body and we're going to go back to the dust from which we came. Or... We're going to be alive and we're going to hear the cry. Behold, the bride groom coming. Did y'all heard that last scripture? Whether we be 
alive or whether we be asleep. We know that if we hold on, we are going to be with him. Is that anybody's determination? Amen. Hallelujah. That no matter whether I die or whether I remain, my determination is to go back with him. When he comes, I'm done. And there's somebody under the sound of my voice that needs to be reminded one more time. So help me preach the closing of the message and look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, it's almost midnight. And the Lord is so
But tonight we're all in the same boat. Because all of us have said something, done something, yes. thought something Amen. that was not right with God. Amen. Offended someone, whether we meant it or not, we say we did it. And so in this moment, this is going to be a church wide altar call. And we're all under the sound of my voice are going to ask God for one important thing. And it's not money. It's not a promotion. It's not a new house. It's not more clothes. The one thing that we're going to ask the Lord collectively is, Lord, forgive me. Forgive me, Jesus. Put Amen. Hands all over the room. Hallelujah, Jesus. And right where you stand, create an altar before the Lord. Anybody that's under the age of seven, somebody said ten. I'm a little bit when I heard somebody say somebody said ten. Under the age of ten, front line. Or ten and under, you ten, front line. 
I'm sitting on it. We'll be sitting on it, right? So make sure y'all don't get left out. These young people, especially, are an extreme target of the enemy. He's after them more than he's after me. That's right. After them. Amen. Because they're at a place in their life where they're still in their innocent state. But in their innocence, there are things that are being introduced to them. At their age, that was not introduced to us until some of us were teenagers. And they're being exposed to things that we were not exposed to at this age. So we got to pray earnestly. Let's give it a few moments. We're getting out of here. We want to pray earnestly for these little ones that God would guard their ears. That God would guard their eyes. That God would guard their spirits. Because the enemy is seeking to devour them at a young age. And so we're going to pray for them first, and then I'm going to pray for these older ones. And I want to pray a special prayer for these young people. That God would secure them and to safeguard them from the trap of the enemy. Because it's these older ones at this age that are committing suicide. We never heard of that stuff. I heard on the news the other day that a 12 year old, where my wife at? A 12 year old cousin suffocated his 8 year old cousin over a game? Yes. A phone? Got upset with him over a phone. And so he went and he strangled his 8 year old cousin. And Bishop, look at the wickedness. Who at 12 years old? would have thought about this. Yes. Said he fixed the body up, yes. put it in the bed, yes. and put the child in the bed as if the child was only sleeping. Yes. And went to bed. Yes. And the next morning, the parents got up and found the child dead and did not know what happened until autopsies was taking place and, and realized that the child was suffocating. And wrote that the 12 year old cousin had done it. How wicked the enemy is in trying to devour our young people. Lift your hands and open your mouths. Hallelujah. If it was never time to pray, it was time. Oh, 
I need you to embrace that one and tell them, let's keep the anointing. It's almost midnight. It's almost midnight. You can make it. You can make it. Let the word in this house tonight. Let the word in this house tonight. Somebody who's encouraged us, lift your hand and give God thanks for the anointing in this house. Holy God, holy God, holy God. I still feel the anointing. I still feel the anointing in this house. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God. It's 10 51. Those who can give me five more minutes. Is there a young person here who wants to speak in tongues? Come quickly. Run to me, run to me, run to me quickly. The preacher already did what he has to do, but I'm just going to embrace what he has done. And if there's another young person here who wants to speak in tongues, if you don't want to speak in tongues, stay where you are. If you have a need the Holy Ghost, run, come quickly. Kebo Shanda. Glory to God. Those with the Holy Ghost will stand with me. For, I, I just ask you for five more minutes. Five more minutes. We're not fighting for the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is in the house. Yes, sir. Oh, glory, 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 glory. Glory, 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 glory. Glory, glory. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Is there another young person or is there another person in this house that need the Holy Ghost? I didn't say want. If you need the Holy Ghost, come. Kebo Shanda. Somebody the Holy Ghost. Those of us who have the Holy Ghost, help me to say Holy Ghost. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Are you telling me everybody in this house, the rest of persons have the Holy Ghost? If you don't have the Holy Ghost, whether young or old, come. Mako Shata, Raboko Shanda Dabaha. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. You shouldn't come in this house and leave the same way you came. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Oh God. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the anointing. Somebody who feel the anointing. I want you to stand and just stretch your hand towards them and say, God, fill them with your power. Before you close your eyes, all of you, you look at me. The Holy Ghost is a gift from God. Nobody has to work for a gift. A gift is given. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. When you feel that feeling inside of you that you don't understand, that is the power of the Almighty God. That is the Holy Ghost. It will speak directly to your mind. And it will say something to you that you don't understand. It's called unknown tongue. All you have to do is open your mouth and allow God to speak through you with your tongue. You don't have to say hallelujah fast or thank to Jesus fast to get the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is already here. And all you have to do 
is believe the word and receive it. Rabo Shanda. Throw your hands up in the air, mother. I need three persons to one person. If you don't have the anointing, don't come. Stay where you are. But we're going to ask God to fill those. That's what survival is about. Right? Revive your soul, your heart, your mind, and those who need God. Every one of these souls right here is important than you and I right now. Somebody believe God to stand and push your hands towards them right now. And somebody that said, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. I wish I had somebody who could come. If you feel that anointing, just come and raise your hand on one of us right now. Kato Shanda. I got three more minutes. Thank you, Jesus. Power to God. Power to God. Somebody just shout power. Somebody shout, Holy Ghost! Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Go with the God, go with the God. Somebody go shout, Power! Yes, 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 somebody say, Holy Ghost! Somebody shout, Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! Holy Ghost! We need you, we need you!
Jesus. I feel you call that name one more time. I feel you call that name one more time. I feel you call that name one more time. Demons have to free you. When you lose that name, Jesus. Sickness have to be healed. Oh, glory to God. Amen. Amen. 